Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this is the third video I'm making in this series on um, transcriptomic data analysis. And if you guys remember, um, in the last video we downloaded a data set from, uh, from the GEO website. So this was the data set that we um, downloaded last time. Um, like we said, we have this um, gene expression matrix where we have a row for every gene and a column for every sample, and then for every gene in every sample, we have a count of how many um, strands of uh, mRNA were found for that gene. So this is basically like a measurement of the expression um, for each gene in each sample. And like we said before, we have the samples um, labeled according to what experimental condition they were. So these CHP ones were um, a, a certain type of lung disease, although we're actually going to be filtering these out and ignoring these ones. Um, and then, yeah, IPF was um, another lung disease. This is the one we're going to be looking at. Um, stands for, remember... Uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, basically just like a disease involving um, scarring of lung tissue. And then um, lastly, we have our um, healthy he healthy tissue controls. So these are just um, these are just like healthy lung tissue that we're using as a point of comparison to see what uh, what different is happening in the um, disease samples. Um, okay, so in this lesson, I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually um, read this data set into R so that we can start working with it in our uh, R program. Um, okay, so basically I just put it, I put it in um, a folder and then I made an R script um, in the same folder. So I just called it for now just readdata.r. And yeah, so here's the beginning of this R program. So personally, I like to start off all my R scripts with um, this command here, just so that I can easily um, clear the environment when I want to, just at the beginning when I'm uh, starting running the script. I like to just start with that. And then when I'm working with the data set, um, I think it's also good practice to put a link to where the data set came from. So whenever I'm doing some kind of analysis on a data set, I'll always just put a little comment with a link um, to where I got the data set. So this is a link to uh, where to find this data set on the GEO website. Um, okay, yeah, so let's, uh, let's try reading this into R. Um, so we're just gonna say data, uh, and then this um, arrow equals read.table, um, and then the name of this file. Uh, yeah, the name of the file in quotes here, um, dot CSV. Then we're going to say header equals true. That's just telling it that the first row is um, is the header labels, uh, not the actual data yet. Sep uh, equals comma because it's a CSV. If it was um, tab separated, we would say we would say the um, sep is a tab, or if it was like a space separation, we'd say space here. But it's um, comma separated values, so we're going to say comma here. Um, and then row dot names equals one. So that's basically telling it that, that the first column um, has all of the row names, not the actual uh, not the actual data yet. Um, okay, so let's try running this command here and uh, seeing what we get. Um, okay, looks like we write it in okay. Um, so I'll just do a couple quick checks here so we can check um, the class of it. Um, it's a data frame. That's that's what um, that's what we want. That's good. Um, we can also say um, dim data. This just tells us the dimensions of this data frame. So we have um, eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-eight rows. Where remember that's that's also how many genes we have because each row corresponds to a gene, and two hundred and eighty-eight samples. And yeah, so we can also check the the row names. So this should be the names of all the genes. We can just say row names data. And uh, yeah, that's all of our um, all of our gene names there. Those are the the row names, and then call names data. That should give us um, the sample names. Yeah, so let's actually let's actually um, pull those out and put them in um, separate variables, just so we have them. So we can say samples uh, arrow equals call names data. Run that, um, and then genes. Um, arrow equals row names data. Run that. And yeah, so now, now we just have um, 
Now we just have these stored in like their own um, their own variables, so we can access them as needed. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, so far so good. So the next thing we need to get is we need to get um, some kind of some kind of vector uh, listing all of the classes for each sample. So we have the sample names here, but we need we need some other some other vector telling us like which one of these are CHP and which one are control and which ones are IPF and we need we basically need some other vector that doesn't have these numbers here that only has the class labels. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to start by defining um, an empty vector uh, just called classes. So just uh, start off with an empty vector there. And then we're going to say for sample in samples, so we're going to iterate through all the items in this um, samples, samples vector here. So yeah, for sample in samples, temp arrow equals, um, okay, and just follow me for a second here, and then I'll explain what everything's doing in a second. We're going to say unlist uh, str split sample comma underscore so let's just let's just take a look at what every part of this is doing for a second so let's just um for example we'll we'll say that we're dealing with this sample here so we'll just say um like you know we'll just call it um the sample for now so basically what this what this str split is doing is it's splitting this string based on whatever character we give it to do the split at. So this should this should split up this string into two strings, um, IPF and then um, 1130. So let's see what it gives us. Um, yeah, but then um, it gives us a list here. So if we, if we see what class this is, it gives us a list. Um, you guys might feel differently, but I don't like that. I like to be dealing with vectors as much as possible in R. I, I don't really like using lists because I think it like makes things more complicated sometimes than it has to be. So that's why I said unlist here just to get it as um to, to get this temp as a vector of these two strings here, IPF and then 1130. Um, but yeah, so after that, that'll give us a vector with these two elements here. Um, and I'll do this for all of the classes in, I mean, sorry, all the items in samples. And then what we want to do is we want to say classes arrow equals append classes, the first element of this, um, temp vector here. So basically it's just, it's just saying for all these samples in our samples vector, just go through for each one, split it up based on the underscore. So split it up, um, get it from a list to a vector, and then take the first element of that vector and append it to classes. So when we run this whole thing, um, we, we end up with this vector classes that gives us the class labels for every sample we have. And we can just check and confirm that this is going to be um, the same length as uh, our samples vector here. Yeah, okay, so so far so good. We can also just do another check here. We can say table classes and just see how many samples we have for each class. Um, so yeah, for the, for the CHP class, we have 82 samples. For the control, we have 103. And for the IPF, we have 103. So if you guys remember from the last video, we took a look at that. Um, we took a look at the Geo website and kind of read the description. And this is what it said. So we, we got what we were expecting. Um, this is what uh, this is what the description of the data set said it would have. So um, yeah, so far so good. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to filter out these CHP samples because this series is going to be about comparing the IPF lung tissue to the control lung tissue. Um, we don't want to look at these CHP samples in this um, in this series. So we want to, so yeah, we want to filter out those and get the data to just be the control and the IPF uh, samples. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say filtered 
data, arrow equals um, data, uh, square brackets, comma, since we're not putting anything, maybe I'll explain this really quick. So the way, the way you access elements in, in like a, a data frame like this, um, it's two dimensional. So we have, um, we have two dimensions where we could give an index here. So this would be the first row and the fourth column, for example. Or we could try um, the second row and the fourth column, or the second row and um, yeah, the fifth column, uh, so on and so on. But if we want to get a slice, we can just not put any number here. This will give us for the fifth column all of the rows. Um, yeah. Or we could do the same here. We could do we could do the first row and then all of the columns. Um, yes, that's how we take slices of it. So I hope you guys are following me so far. So um, we're going to say here, filter data, arrow equals data, uh, just comma because we, we want all of we want all of the rows, but we want only the columns where, and then we're going to give the condition to check for every column. And basically where this condition is true, we want those columns uh, to get into this filtered data set. So the condition is going to be um, classes in, and we have to write the in like this when we're doing a condition check. So classes in um, the, the string vector control comma IPF. So basically um, checking this condition for this vector classes, wherever the for every element of classes, we check whether that element is in um, this vector containing control and IPF. So basically, um, this will return true for every class classes element that is either control or IPF, and then false for every class element that uh, isn't. So just to show you guys what this um, condition like evaluates to. It evaluates to a boolean like that, so it's it's basically a boolean where every element in classes is either true or false, and it's true if it's either control or IPF, and it's false if it's not. Meaning in our, in this case, if it's CHP, so this will return all of the um, all of the columns of this data frame where the class is either control or IPF, basically. Um, okay, but before we run that, we also want to filter the class labels too. So we're going to say filtered classes arrow equals um, classes, and then just the same thing. But this is only this is only um, one dimensional, so we don't do the we don't do the comma here. We, this is only one dimensional, so we're just returning the classes where the where the class falls into. Um, falls into either either being control or IPF. So basically this this class vector will will still serve the purpose of telling us what class every column of this filtered data uh, data frame is. Um, okay so let's uh, let's run both of those. Uh, looks like it ran okay. So now we're gonna say just just for another little check um, it's gonna do these like checks to make sure everything's working properly. So we're going to say dim filtered data. Yeah, see now we still we still got all of the rows, but we only got 206 of um, the columns. Because remember we had, um, I don't know if I can scroll back all this way actually, but uh, yeah, yeah, we had 103 controls and 103 IPF. So now we have 206 um, columns uh, and samples of data here. And then, um, for the classes, the filtered classes, this should also be 206 if it worked properly. And yes, it looks like it did. So now, now we have this um, filtered classes that still tells us the class label of every column in this um, filtered data uh, data frame. And we could have also filtered the samples here because basically right now this, this samples vector is still telling us the sample labels for um, not for the filter data, but for the original data. So we could have also done um, another filtering of the sample labels too, like this. But we don't actually 
really need these sample like number labels anymore. We don't we don't really need that for the future. All we need is um, the class label for each of these uh, for each of these columns. That's all. That's all I'm going to get um, for now. Um, okay, so the last thing we're going to do for this video is we're going to save these objects here, these these like R objects. We're going to save them um, to files so that we can easily read them in um, to other R programs. So we won't we won't have to repeat all of this code every time we want to um, read in this data and start working with it. So we're going to save these to um, RDS files. So yeah, basically an RDS file is basically just an easy way of saving an R um, object so that you can easily read it into um, like other other programs without having to like recreate it again uh, from, from the raw data. Uh, okay, so the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna make a folder here. Um, I'm just gonna call it, um, just gonna call it RDS objects. And then the way we're going to save these uh, objects here is just with save RDS parentheses filtered data comma file equals and then the path to where we want to save it. So I'm going to say RDS objects because that's the folder um, slash and then filtered data dot RDS. And then um, same thing for the filtered classes. I'm just going to say save RDS filtered classes file equals RDS objects slash filtered classes dot RDS. Uh, okay, so I'm going to save those. Uh, okay, looks like it worked, but let's just uh, let's just check here. Yeah, it looks good. And then um, last thing for the video. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to read these RDS objects back into R because that's what we're going to be doing actually in, in the next video so we don't have to make them again. We're just going to read them back in. So the way the way we read them and just to prove you guys that, that this works, I'll I'll clear uh, I'll clear the the saved variables here so that we get rid of them in our uh, R program and I'll show you guys that we actually can read them back in and have them uh, and and like properly recover them. So I'm going to say filtered whoops data arrow equals um, read RDS and then um, the path to the object that I'm trying to read in. And then um, same thing here, filtered classes and then the path. And then we can uh, run these. And yeah, it looks like they write in okay. We can just do a couple of checks, check to make sure they um, have the right dimensions. Yeah, same as before. Looks good. Uh, okay, looks good. Yeah, so um, that's all I have for you guys for today. Um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how to actually begin to do um, what's called a differential expression analysis. That's basically a way to see what's different in terms of gene expression between the uh, control samples and the um, disease samples. So we're gonna be doing that um, next lesson. Uh, also, by the way, um, if you guys are following along um, with like the code and stuff, um, I just wanna let you guys know that all the code is gonna be up on my GitHub and I'm gonna post a link in the description of each video um, to the GitHub so that you can find the code if you want to uh, download it yourself and follow along. Um, the only thing that won't be on the GitHub is the actual um, data set itself, just because uh, I'm actually not sure what the rules are about if I'm allowed to like distribute other people's data, um, like give out other people's data set like on my GitHub. Um, I don't know what like the etiquette or like the rules are about that. But remember, if you guys want to download this data set for yourself, the link to it is right here. You, you don't need an account or anything. Um, you can just go to this website, the GEO website, and uh, you can download it yourself. And and we went over how to do it, how, how to do that in the last lesson. So if you guys uh, haven't seen it already, that's how you can find out um, how to download this, this uh, data. Um, okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you guys next time.